One, two, three. Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Everton. I'm actually from this country. And we come out here out of love for you to preach the gospel, out of love for our neighbor, because the Bible says we should love our neighbor as ourselves. And it is a hate crime to know that your neighbor is in danger and not warn them. It is a hate crime to know that something bad is going to happen to your neighbor and not warn them. So we come out here to preach the gospel to you, for those who will listen, so that God's people, when they hear the message of the truth, when they hear the message of the gospel, they will run to him, they will repent of their sins, they will trust in him, and they will be saved. Now the Bible teaches in Matthew chapter 1 that Jesus Christ came into the world to save his people from their sins. That's Matthew chapter 1, verse 21. The Bible also teaches that God's sheep hear his voice and they come to him. Which means that we can preach the gospel and the gospel message, when it goes to the ears of the sheep of God, God's sheep will come to him. So we have confidence today that if we preach the gospel message to the people of God, they will come to him. They will run to him. They will leave their sin. And they will cleave to God. Now the Bible teaches that there are five reasons why people don't believe. There are five reasons why people don't believe the gospel. Five reasons. Reason one. You love your sin. You love your sin so much. And you are unwilling to let it go. Reason two. The devil has blinded your eyes so that you cannot see the light of the gospel. The light of the gospel shining in the face of Christ. Reason three, you hate God. That's another reason why you won't come to God, because you hate Him. And a lot of you will say to me today, if I were to ask you, do you love God? You will say, yes, I love God, but God says this. If you love me, you will do what I say. That is how God knows that you love Him. If you say you love God, you get up every day you live in sin. You hate God. And it is because you love your sin why you will not come to God. Reason four. You hate God's law. You hate the fact that God says in His law, do not fornicate. Get married first before you have sex. You hate that God says in His law, do not gossip because you love to talk behind people's backs. And say bad things about them. You hate that God's law says you should not steal. Because in this country we have something called scamming. You call people overseas and you scam them out of, their, out of their money. And you have wealth, you have prosperity by stealing people's money, people's belongings. So that you can live a life of rebellion. Live a life of abomination. Live a life of immorality and sensuality. And reason number five, God has not changed your heart. God has not decided to change your heart. The Bible says that no one will see the kingdom of heaven unless they are born again. But being born again is something that God does. It's not something that you do. That is why if you were to ask your mom, did you participate in your birth? No, you did not. Your mom just pushed you out. Or your mom had help from the doctor. You did not help your mom birth you. The new birth, being born again, is a work of God. That's reason number five why you will not come to God. So to sum it all up, reason one, you love your sin. Reason two, you are blinded by the devil. Reason three, you hate God. Reason four, you hate God's law. And reason five, your heart has not been changed by the mercy and grace of God. The Bible also says this, because reason five can easily be solved by the power of God. Reason five, which says that it is because your heart has not been changed. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, that faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of Christ. It is by hearing the word 
It is by hearing the gospel. It is by hearing the good news that the sheep of God, the people of God, will come to God in faith. It is through the gospel message, which is this, the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 says that God sent His Son, or rather teaches that God sent His Son to die for sinners, and that He was buried afterwards, and that He rose on the third day for the forgiveness of His people. That's the gospel message. The gospel command is this. Repent of your sins and trust in Jesus Christ for forgiveness and eternal life. The gospel promise is this. Forgiveness of all the sins that you ever committed in your entire life and all the sins that you will ever commit. Forgiveness of all of them and eternal life. Life from the dead. Because all of us, apart from grace, all of us, apart from salvation, are the walking dead. All of us are dead in our sin, apart from Jesus Christ. All of us are dead in our sin, apart from the grace of God. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2, that before salvation, we are dead in our sin. The Bible also says in Isaiah chapter 59 verse 2, that because of your sin, you have created a separation between you and God. What is death? Death is separation. If you are separated from God, it means you are the walking dead today. You're living, you're walking, but you're dead. You're the walking dead. And the only way you can be living, the only way you can be alive is if God makes you alive by giving you eternal life. And the way to get eternal life is by repentance and faith in Jesus Christ. The promise of the gospel is forgiveness and eternal life. That's the gospel promise. Are you a Rastafarian, sir? If you're a Rastafarian, and just to remind you, my voice is louder than yours. I have an amplifier. If you are, an, are a Rastafarian, you are worshiping a dead person called Selassie. If anybody else here is a Rastafarian and you're worshiping Selassie, I, he died August 27, 1975, and he's still dead. So if you're worshiping Selassie, I, you're worshiping a dead man, and you need to stop. You need to repent of your sins. I say again to you, sir, my voice is louder than yours. I have an amplifier. So if you are a Selassie I worshiper, you must repent of your sin because you're worshiping a dead man who's been eaten by worms years ago. If you were to dig up his body, you probably see, you probably would see uh, bones or dust by now. I don't know. But he's a dead man. Stop worshiping Selassie. I. We know when he was born and we know when he died and he's still dead. Jesus Christ is alive. Jesus Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Jesus Christ is the Lion of the tribe of Judah, not Selassie. I. This Rastafarian movement started in 1930. 1930. This Rastafarian false movement that claims that it is the truth. If you are a Rastafarian, take this warning and take it good. If you do not repent of Rastafarianism and you die, you are going to see who the real God is. And He will not have any mercy on you. He will not have any grace for you. So I say again, sir, if you are a Rastafarian, repent of your sin and trust in Christ. Because your so-called God, who is Selassie, is dead. And He's not coming back. I hope you took those words seriously. As I was saying, back to what I was saying. The Gospel promise is forgiveness and eternal life. The gospel promise is forgiveness and eternal life. Now with the message, with the command, and with the promise comes gospel warning. And the warning is this. If you neglect so great a salvation, you will never escape. The Bible says that Jesus Christ is the one and only way to God, the Father. He's the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to Him. No one comes to the Father. But by Jesus Christ. 
It is not Buddha. It is not Hinduism. It is not Selassie. It is not Allah. It is not anybody else who you may call God. It is only Jesus Christ. And I'm not talking about the white man you see on the pictures. I'm talking about the Jewish man, Jesus Christ. He's the only way to the Father. If you do not trust in Him, if you do not believe in Him, you will not escape. And guess what? You don't know if today is your last day on earth. You do not know if today, on your way home, you will not die in a car accident. You do not know that as you're sitting here right now, and as you're walking by the sound of my voice, your heart won't stop. You don't know. And none of you here know if your brain will have a stroke and you fall down dead. None of you know. And guess what else? Everyone who died yesterday had plans for today. Everyone who died last year had plans for this year. And they're not here. I'm sure that Selassie had plans for the day after. August 27, 1975, and he died. And thank goodness, if you were to read the history of Selassie, he was a Christian. So I don't know why Rastafarians claim that they can't be Christians, they can't serve Jesus Christ, when their God, who they call God, Selassie, was a Christian. But continuing on, none of you here, under the sound of my voice, know when you're going to die. None of you here are too young to die. And none of you here are too old to die. You're actually closer to death than you'll ever know. Every breath that you take brings you closer to your last breath. So keep in mind what we're saying. The Word of God says that unless you repent, you will all perish. The Word of God says in this very famous verse, John 3, 16, all of us know it. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son that those who believe in Him will not what? perish but have everlasting life if you don't repent if you don't believe and you die there is no grace there is no mercy after death and there's no repentance there's no more chances God is a good judge and he will not look at you and say you can go free man don't worry about all the things you've done you can go free if you did not trust in Jesus Christ, the only Savior, the only way of salvation. The God of the Bible is not the God of Islam. The God of Islam will look at you on that day of judgment and say, because your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds, come into my heaven. But the question needs to be asked, what about the rapist who decided to become a Muslim? What about the child murderer who decided to become a Muslim? Does Allah look at him and say, don't worry about it, man. All your good deeds outweigh your bad deeds. Come on into my heaven. When there was no atonement, no judgment, no propitiation for the crime that he committed in the eyes of God. That's a bad judge. That's a judge that is no different from a judge who will look at you, a rapist, a thief, a murderer, and say to you, because someone gave him a bribe, you can go free. You can go free. But the God of the Bible is a good judge. The God of the Bible is a righteous judge. And he will never look at the wicked who rejects Jesus Christ and say, come into my heaven. But rather, he will judge. He will have no mercy. He will be just. He will have no grace for you on that day of judgment. But there's hope for you right now because you're breathing. There's hope for you right now because you're alive. There's hope for you right now in this moment. As the Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, today is the day of salvation. Don't wait until tomorrow. Don't say to yourself or of yourself, I got to change myself first. Because if you can change yourself, why do you need God? If you have the power to change yourself, to change your heart, why do you need God? Run to God the way you are and let God change you. Run to God the way you are and let God transform you. Repent of your sins and go to God and say, God, help me to change. Help me to live a life pleasing in your eyes. Help me to serve you because I know that apart from grace, I will go right back into my sin. The Bible says that we can do nothing apart from Christ. John 15, 5. The Bible also says that a man can receive nothing unless it has been given to him from God. John 3, 27. The Bible also says this. 
Every good and perfect gift comes from God. James chapter 1 verse 17. Which means that any good gift that you have, water, food, life, breath, and health, it all came from God. And how many times have you thanked God today for his gifts? How many times have you said, God, thank you for all that you've done for me? How many times have you said, God, thank you for allowing me to breathe? Did you know that when you borrow something and you don't give it back, it's stealing? How many times have you borrowed the breath of God and not give it back? Can you give back to God and inhale? Can you inhale and give God back the breath that you took? That's stealing. You're stealing God's breath. And you're not even being thankful about it. No wonder when that day comes, when God will judge, he will have no mercy. Because not only does God give us breath, not only does God give us life, not only does God give us every good thing that we have in our life, but God is also piling up your judgment because of your unrepentant heart and your rebellion against Him. Romans chapter 2 verse 5, because of your unrepentant heart, you are storing up wrath for yourself against the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God. What does that mean? It means every time that you sin, it's added up. It's adding up every time you sin. How many sins have you committed this morning? How many sins did you commit last night? How many of you slept beside someone last night who was not your husband or who was not your wife? How many of you spoke something bad about your neighbor? How many of you would wish that your neighbor would die so that you could have their belongings? How many of you would see someone driving a car that's better than yours and say, I wish he would die so he could have his car? How many of you, men specifically, see the young women around here in the town wearing clothes that expose their bodies and, and are sensual and you say, wow, oh my goodness. And put your hand on your head. Yeah, when I was in high school, I used to do it too. I, I used to do this, like, oh, Lust. The Bible says if you look at a woman to lust after her, you have committed adultery with her in your heart. That's sin. And how many of you men are sleeping with a woman every night or multiple women? They call them gallis. How much gallis they are? How much gallis they are? I don't even know. I don't even know. Yeah, me come from Jamaica too. I mean, I have two brother. Two of them are gallis. I always want them all the time. How many gallis they are? You have multiple girls. You, have, you, can't, you can't even count them by your finger. You have 10, 20, 30 girlfriends. 30 girlfriends. One for each day of the week. One for each day of the month. You just change them over, shift them over. Alright, today they are today, today Patrice. Today are Peter Gay. Today are Karen. Today are Shelly. Today are Pauline. Today are Pamela. You just put one name upon each day of the month. And just shift them up and change them up. Like say the girl, them. A property are the girl them no mean nothing or the girl them are use. They just use them and send them off. So you say God, so you say God in heaven look down by and say, what you get this to him, man? What you get this? Cool, he nice. What you get this, man? God is looking down from heaven with anger. God is looking down from heaven with hatred. God is looking down from heaven with judgment on every sinner. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 5 verse 5, you hate all who continue in iniquity. The Bible also mentions the seven deadly sins. And if you count those seven deadly sins, you will see that the last two on that list is people. God is not looking at the gallus with favor. God is not looking at the gallus with any joy or approval of their actions and their lifestyle. And how many young women here have more than five boyfriends who, okay, today, today Frank go give me thousand dollar tomorrow, Jeffrey go give me ten thousand tomorrow, Michael go give me thirty thousand, and you use the men, and what do you do? You you, you scam them out of their money. What do you, you call it again? You, you, oh, oh, you, you clone them out. You clone them out. What do you call it? Um, when, when, when a group of guys would, would mess around with their friend, they call him gal clone because they get gal and yam out their money. Not true, brother. Gal clone. Not true. Because the girl them have multiple money. The girl them have all 20 man and each day of the month. 10 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand. 
because the girl would promise the man some sex and then say, hey, give me the money first, man. I'm buy some clothes, I'm buy some bag, I'm buy some shoes, and then me get it. And then the man give it, and then the man call the girl how much time, and the girl now answer, the girl say, yeah, you know what, say so and so, come up. They call the man the girl clown. Girl clown that. I mean, no, so I know what you're talking about. I mean, no, so I know. They call that girl clown. But guess what? That girl who's using the man is a liar. And God is not looking, yes, and the thief. And God's not looking at that girl with approval either. So the girl is and the, and the girl who clone up the man, them. I don't know what you call that girl there, no, but they have a name. Somebody might can't tell me how. What What, what, what you say? Go, uh uh, gold digger. The girl is them and the gold digger, them. Brother, thank you for that one day. The girl is them and the gold digger, them. God now look pound with favor. He's not the biblical command, the Bible commands, get married, get married, repent of your sins and trust in Christ. And if you're a man who loves sex, go marry one woman. And if you're a woman who loves money, go and marry a man who can take care of you. One man, one, one. The Bible commands all of us to repent of our sins and trust in Him. And all of us, every single one of us, are obligated for God to keep His commandments, to keep His law. But the only way we can be pleasing in the eyes of God is if we do these things in Christ, in union with Christ. The Bible says, be perfect, for I am perfect. The Bible says, be holy as God is holy. But none of us can be perfect and none of us can be holy. That's bad news. But what's the good news? The good news is this. When you repent of your sins and trust in Christ, you are made in union with Christ. That's what the Bible says. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. That's what the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 verse 1. That there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ. That is what the Bible says. That God made him when you know sin to be sin that we may become the righteousness of God in him When you are made in union with Christ God declares you to be holy to be righteous to be perfect Because you are in Christ That is why when you are a Christian you are living a life of constant fight against your sin And you slip here and there because you will never be at a point in your life in this life where you don't sin anymore you will slip you will make mistakes but because you are in Christ God does not count those sins against you he declares you righteous and you can say with Paul I am found in Christ not having a righteousness of my own derived from the law but a righteousness that comes from God on the basis of faith in Jesus Christ, my Lord. That is the only way you and I can be saved. That is the only way you and I can receive forgiveness through Jesus Christ. Oh, you're, you're, you're a Rastafarian worshiping a dead man? Can I get a one piece? You're worshiping a dead man. You can stand right there and have a debate with me. Go right there. You can stand right there. Let's, let's have a discussion. Of course. So, you worship Selassie, a dead man, right? No, I don't worship Selassie. I don't. Don't judge me. Don't do what are you? The Bible says I can judge you. James chapter, John chapter 4, verse 24. That means I can judge you also. Well, you don't have a right because you're a sinner. Oh, you know that? Oh, you know that? Because you're not in Christ. What do you mean? Oh, you know that? I know because the way you look and the way you talk. You look like a sinner. I'm not a sinner. You know why you look I'm like a sinner? I'm sinful. Look at your ear style. Look at your dress. Look at my dress. Well, your fruits, your fruits, the fruit of your life gives you away. You guys only come here to inherit dirty money. Where's the where's the cup that we're using to collect money? Where's the cup? The people right behind you. Ask them how many of them did we ask for money? Money? No, you have to ask. No, but later on you're gonna ask. Oh, we don't. See, you're a liar. You just bear false witness against us. All of us. You are like Kevin Smith. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. Uh, Kevin Smith. No, I'm not Kevin yeah. Smith. No, I'm In not. 
You just told a lie on us. So you are a liar from the pit of hell. You're a liar. The Bible says in John chapter 8 verse 44 that you lie because you are a child of Satan. You lie because you're a child of Satan. The Bible also says in John chapter 3 verse 10 that those who continue in sin, those who practice sin, are children of the devil. Sir, my voice is louder than yours because I have an amplifier. So if you don't want to have a discussion, I'm just going to respond to you. You're a liar. You just told a lie on us. You said that we're collecting money and we're not. Are you going to repent of a lie you just told on us? Yeah. You said we're out here to collect money and we're not. Are you going to apologize for that? No. Oh, so you're going to hold your lie. See? That's why I know you're not a Christian because you're a liar. That's why you're going to burn when you die. That's why when you die you're going to burn. Because you're a child of the devil. Everyone who does not repent of their sins like you. Show me one line in the Bible. 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 One lie. Where? Show me one line in the Bible. Yeah, you just said that the Bible has lies. You need to prove your statement. Come and show me an example of a lie in the Bible. Come on, come on, come on. Come and show me. Come and show me a lie in the Bible. Come and show me a line in the Bible. Come and show me a line in the Bible, sir. You just said that there's lies in the Bible. Show me a line in the Bible. All you can do is say things and then walk away. Nobody here is afraid of me. That's another lie. Nobody here is afraid of me. You're a child of the devil. You need to repent of your sins, sir. Repent of your sins. And stop worshiping Selassie. And please stand 10 feet away from me. Please. Stand 10 feet away from me. Stand 10 feet away from me, sir. Stand up. Stand 10 feet away from me. Stand 10 feet away from me. Yeah. You see what I'm talking about? The Bible teaches that men like this oppose the gospel. They hate God. They hate the things of God. Because we're out here preaching the things of God, the demons that are in him are not comfortable. The demons inside of him are uncomfortable. I'm going to call you to repentance again, sir. Repent of your sins and trust in Christ. Because he's the only way you'll be saved. Stop worshiping Selassie because he's dead. He's dead. And the only way you can be saved is by worshiping Jesus Christ. Selassie is dead. Jesus Christ rose from the dead, sir, and he's at the right hand of the Father right now. Selassie is has been eaten by worms. He's dead. Since 1975, August 27. Do you want to come and have a discussion? Do you want to come over here? So with the dress, you want to come and have a discussion? Want to come over? Okay, I guess, I guess not. Okay, it's time for me to end so my brother can come and have his turn to preach the gospel. When we preach the gospel, brethren, as the Bible says, those who are according to the flesh hate God and they cannot submit themselves to the law of God because they are not even able to do so. The Bible says that because people are blinded by the devil, they will not see the light of the gospel. So I know exactly what just happened. The lies he told about us, the way he acted, the violence that is in his heart. That's a child of the devil. John chapter 3, 1 John chapter 3 verse 10 says this. The children of God and the children of the devil are made obvious. Whoever does not practice righteousness is of the devil. In 1 John chapter 1 verse 1 John chapter 3 verse 7 says this whoever practices sin is of the devil. So when you have a lifestyle of sin and you are not a Christian, you are not in Christ, you are not in God, you are a child of the devil. And that's how children of the devil will act. 
They will curse you out. They will tell you things about you. They will insult you because they hate you. They hate the children of God. And they hate the things of God and the law of God. But I'll pray for him because God commands me to love my neighbor. God bless. God bless. Repent of your sins and trust in Christ.